She's sort of a bad storyteller. She doesn't know how to tell a story very well, but she gets caught. She gets uh, caught up in her own words. She's not a She's not a very good wordsmith, they say. I don't know. We're going to find out. We're going to have a debate at some point. It was a great, uh, we had a great debate. We had uh, great poll numbers on the debate. And we enjoyed it. I think, I hope she enjoyed it too, but I enjoyed it. And, no, well, we're looking at it, but, you know, when you win, you don't really necessarily have to do it a second time. So we'll see. But uh, we had a, uh, I thought we had a great debate last what, night. Thank you very much. What would everybody. need to change for you to agree to a second debate? Would you want different rules? Would you want a different format? You know, when you when you don't win, it's like a fighter. When a fighter has a bad fight, gets knocked out, or loses the fight, the first thing he says is, we want a rematch. So we won the debate according to every poll, every single poll. I think that, uh, are we going to do a rematch? I just don't know. But we'll think about it. Would you still do the one on NBC on September 25th? You, you proposed that. Are you still yeah, committed to I would, that? I would do NBC. I'd do uh, Fox, too. I do Fox too, but right now we have to determine whether or not we even want to do it. We had a great night last night, and you see by the poll numbers, it was really fantastic. Thank you very much, everybody. Donald Trump is in full-on panic mode. His tired, angry talking points just aren't working anymore, and even his most ardent supporters seem to be seeing through his shtick or at least getting bored with it. You know, I do the weave. You know what the weave is? I'll talk about like nine different things, and they all come back brilliantly together. And it's like, and friends of mine that are like English professors, they say, it's the most brilliant thing I've ever seen. And, but the fake news, you know what they say? He rambled. We were given Joe Biden, and now we're given somebody else. Heavy into the transgender world, heavy into lots of different worlds. You have people dying financially because they can't buy bacon. Everybody's going to be forced to buy an electric car, which they're not going to do because they don't want that. We have commercials that are at a level I don't think that anybody's ever done before. Nobody's spoken to crowds bigger than me. If you look at Martin Luther King, when he uh, did his speech, his great speech, and you look at ours, same real estate, same everything, same number of people, if not, we had more. Okay, so we are going to let you see the crowds. I know that's why a lot of you love to watch, is to see the crowds, and the crowds are here. You can always depend on Right Side Broadcasting Network to show you the people. So we're going to let you see the crowds, and we'll be right back. People are walking out of his rallies, and more and more Republicans are openly endorsing Kamala Harris for president. This is a man who's incapable, like a child, incapable of controlling his emotions, like a child is. He is trembling with anger. So against all advice, against all sanity, he attacks the Republican governor of Georgia. I say all this to say the guy is nuts. He's odd, he's weird, he's scared to death, okay? He, and he cannot control his emotions. Now you may think we want a guy like that as president. No, that's insane. Donald Trump is losing his marbles. He's already lost like half of his marbles. It's just getting worse. Do you really think this guy can be president of the United States again? There are a host of Republicans, uh, Republican lawyers in particular, who are concerned about uh, the possibility of Donald Trump becoming president again because of his lack of, as we see it, lack of support, uh, lack of willingness to abide by the rule of law. And for lawyers, that is extremely important. Uh, and I think Kamala Harris has demonstrated fidelity to the rule of law. Uh, obviously, there are a lot of unknown questions about her. Those questions are being answered. I, for me, uh, I, I thought her performance during the uh, convention was was good. I thought her debate uh, performance was was outstanding, quite frankly. And the the final thing that I would just say is, e even after the election, whoever wins, um, we're still going to have a divided country, right? There'll be 70, 80 million people that may disagree with the views of the of the pr new president. And I, I think about who is most willing to work to unite our country. I watched, uh, I watched a cult be birthed and I watched followers just walk off the deep end of the plank for Donald Trump. And so as this started to play out, not just in 2020, but even before, right? We got to see Donald Trump put pressure on us for how we reacted to COVID here uh, against Governor Kemp and myself and several others in decisions that we were making. So I could kind of see this train wreck coming, but would have never have guessed it would have gotten as bad as it got in 2020 with the election. Um, look, I just want my party back. 
I, selfishly speaking, I'm supporting Kamala Harris because I think she's a steadier hand than Donald Trump will ever be. I think it will create an opportunity for us to have four years to heal and rebuild this party. Uh, I, I feel so so strongly about it. I've even written a book. Uh, many of you all have seen this. Four, nearly four years ago, I wrote this book, GOP 2.0. It played out what would happen if we didn't take our own medicine. And unfortunately, we're here. Uh, but thankfully, we actually have an alternative. We have a different solution. And although I don't agree with 100% of Kamala Harris's policies, uh, we do agree on several policies. One is that Donald Trump can never, ever, ever be in charge of anything ever again in this country. Trump's rallies used to be terrifying, not necessarily just because of the things that he said, but because the audience was so receptive and cult-like. But now his gatherings are mostly just pathetic. Trump is still desperate to seem like a strong man, but his decline, both physically and mentally, is way too obvious to hide at this point. He pretends that his crowds are bigger than Kamala's and that he has no fear about losing the election, but it oozes from everything he says and everything he does. And there's no way that his mediocre debate performance won't turn off some of his less diehard supporters. It's certainly not winning over anyone. Donald Trump is and always has been addicted to attention. And as the likelihood of him getting that attention by being president starts to recede, it's going to be fascinating to see how he processes that and what he does over the next 60 days.